I'm going to show you how we can import um, a DXF file that's been sent to us that uh, defines tooling geometry. So we can define that as a form tool within PowerMill. First thing we need to do is import the uh, DXF file into PowerShape. Okay, so now you can see we've imported our DXF file. Now there's a lot of um, annotation and geometry and tooling borders in here that we, we really don't need and, and we can't use in PowerMill. So we have to sort of split this up into, into areas that we need. So first we need to define what is the cutting element of the tool and we need to define what is the shank and we need to define what is the holder. First thing we need to do is define uh, a work plane at the center point of, of our tool. Okay, I'm just going to snap my work plane there. And the other thing that we need to do, it's very important, is make sure that the y-axis is pointing along the axis of the tool. So I'm just going to bring that around and snap to that point there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to um, define the cutting edge and the shank and the holder. I'm simply going to track a composite curve that defines these. Now, shortcut to composite curve is Control H. I want to start on the center point there and I want to finish the cutting edge of my tool at that point there. And it's simply a case of just click around the geometry that we need. Now we don't need to close it off there, we can leave that open. I'm just going to record that. Secondly, I want to define what is the um, shank element of the tool. And exactly like before, I'm just going to define a start point. Start point, I want to be there. And my end point, I'm going to be there. Now it's quite important to define these start and end points because your composite curve, because there's such a lot of geometry, your composite curve may go off and wander around the rest of the geometry. So it's always good practice just to um, define a start and end point. And I'm just simply going to, again, click around to define what is the shank element of my tool. Now you've noticed I've not gone all the way up there because I don't need to because we can define in Parmel how far this tool is, is sticking out of our holder there. And it's 28 millimeters. So I'm just going to record that at that point. And thirdly, I need to define the holder element. So again, I'm going to define the start point of my holder. I'm just going to define now the end point of my holder just there. Okay. And exactly the same as before, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to click, walk the composite curve around the geometry that defines the holder. Now we don't need to put that in to be fair, but we might as well do it there. We could just jump across that gap if we wanted to. And I'm just going to record that point. Okay, so now we've got three composite curves. I'm just going to select these three. I'm just going to blank accept them so we can see what we've got. Okay, so you can see we've got three elements there. So I'm just going to select the cutting element. I'm just going to export them. I'm just going to export it, say next. And I'm just going to put it in a folder form tool. We'll call this um, tool. Uh, save it as a DGK file. Save the model geometry. Next, the selected model geometry I've got selected. Next, and I need it to be around the active work plane. So remember the active work plane that we created that was along the axis of the tool? That's the important one. That's what we need to make sure we've got selected there. Click finish. <coughs> now I'm going to select the shank part of the tool and do exactly the same. So say export. Next, I'm going to call this one shank. Save that one. Next, we've selected, and again, make sure we've got active work plan finished there. Okay, and thirdly, the holder element. So I'll say export. Next one there. I'm going to call this hold. There. Save that one. Next, selected, and again, active work plan. Finish. Okay, so there's my three elements exported. So over in Permal then, um, if we create a tool and we create a form tool, I can open up the tool. So there's my tool element. So if we just look from the front, you can see we've got a little chamfer on there as well. And go to the shank. I'm going to open up the shank element. Okay, and then finally, open up the holder. Say open. And you can see I've got an overhang of 28 millimeters there. If we made that 30, you'll see obviously there's a gap there because we, we made it 28. So once we've done that, we can then add that to the tool database and, uh, and that's that tool done.